Um, Paolo is joining us to talk about um, GeoDjango and Django and how to tie those together with, uh, with PostGIS. Uh, so we're going working with maps in Django and GeoDjango uh, from Python to PostGIS uh, with Paolo Migliore. Hey, Paolo, how you doing? Hi, I'm fine. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm starting sharing my screen. Lovely. Okay, can you see it? We can see it. Okay, perfect. So, hello everyone. I'm very happy to be here with you, even if remotely. In this talk, we'll see together how to build various type of uh, maps from scratch using Django. And if you're asking yourself what type of maps we can build with Django, let's see an example together right away. These maps show mountains, peaks, location all around the world. We all use maps like this every day in web or mobile application. I built this map with Django using the Natural Heart Geographic da Map dataset. In this talk, we'll see together how to build map like that. But first, I present myself. I'm Paolo Mecchiore, and I'm the CTO of 20 Tab, a Pythonic software company based in Rome. I'm a software engineer and a long-time Python backend developer. After using Django for a few years, I became a contributor to the project. I also really like hiking in the mountains, so I decided to build a map where I can put all my points I've reached. Uh, I took this photo from the starting point of my last hike. I was in, on the Italian Apennines and the sun was, um, has not yet risen, but trust me, in the distance, there is the Adriatic Sea. The making of this map will be a bit little like this hike. We'll start from a, an easy stretch with little slope and then we we'll go up in altitude, where things will get more challenging. But let's start from the basic about web maps. On Wikipedia, regarding web maps, we can read that Web mapping is the process of using the maps delivered by geographic information systems on the internet. A web map has many features. It can be static or dynamic. You can interact with it or you can only view it. The map can use raster or vector tiles to represent the surface. Usually the data is stored in a special database. And a web map will use a JavaScript library to show data on your web page. But implementing a geographic information system for Stretch is beyond the scope of this talk. To do this, we are going to use Django, my preferred web framework. The requirements to create our map with Django are a stable and supported version of Python, the latest stable version of Django itself. And in my example, I've installed it in a virtual environment. To create my map, uh, the my map project, I switched to my project uh, directory and then use the start project Django command. The basic file of our project will be created. After switching to the my map directory, we create our markers app with the Django startup command. Again, all the necessary file will be created for us. Now we have to activate our markers application by inserting its name in the list of the installed apps in the settings of our project. In the markers template directory, we can now create a template for our map. For now, we add only usual boilerplate with a title, but without a body content. In the markers URL file, we must now add the path to view our map using its template view. As a last step, we include 
and turn the URL file of the marker app to index of the project. With these simple steps, we just made a first view in Django, but it will show a blank page. So we can avoid checking the browser content and let's move on something more challenging. I took this photo uh, after an half hour of walking in the dark. You can see the sunrise in the distance. We are about to start the high altitude path. As for your app, something will, be, will begin to be seen in our project as well. In fact, we'll add a blank map to our page using the leaflet library. Leaflet is one of the most used JavaScript libraries for web maps. It's a free software and it's desktop and mobile friendly. Leaflet is very light. It weighs less than 40 kilobytes. It has a very good documentation that you can read online. To use the leaflet, we need to link its JavaScript and CSS modules in our template. We need also a div tag with map as ID. In addition, using the Django static template tag, we'll also link our custom JavaScript and CSS file, which we'll now create. We add our CSS file in the static directory and inside it, we add only the basic rules to show a full screen map. In our JavaScript file, we add the code to view our map. Using the defined variables, we initialize an OpenStreetMap layer. We hook the newly defined layer to our map. The last statement sets a map view that mostly contains the whole world with the maximum zoom level possible. We can now start our Django project with the run server command and we can finally visit our map page. We just created an empty map with Django and the result is pretty much what you see now. A map without markers showing the whole world. This photo shows the crossroad at the end of the first part of my hike, just before a very challenging uphill stretch. The sun has risen for a while and the landscape is clearly visible around. Likewise, after having clearly visualized our map, we'll now start with a bit more elaborate part, writing more code to create our markers and display them. It's time to get to know and activate GeoDjango, the Django geographic module. Django had a geographic functionality a few years ago in the country GIS module with specific fields, multiple database backends, special queries, and also admin integration. Since then, uh, many new useful features have been added every year until the last version. Before activating it, we need to install some requirements. A mandatory Geo Django requirements is GDHL. It's a OSGO library for reading and writing raster and vector geospatial data formats. It's released with a free software license and it has a, var a variety of useful command lines for data translation and processing. To easily install the GDHL package on a Debian based system, you can use the apt package manager. For other operating system, you can read specific instruction in the Django documentation. We can now activate GeoDjango by adding the Contrib GIS module in the installed apps in our setting project. To use GeoDjango correctly, we need to change our database engine and use one of the compatible database backend. In this chart, I've synthesized the compatibility table of the geographic backend supported by GeoDjango. In the Django documentation, there are three compatibility tables 
special lookups, database function, aggregate function. As you can see, PostJS is the only geographic backend that supports 100% of the features. In this project, we have useful, obviously chosen to use uh, PostJS as GeoJungle database backend. As you know, PostJS is a Postgres extension and it's also the best database backend for GeoJungle. It internally integrates special data and has special data types, indexes, and functions. In order to use PostGIS as a database backend, we need to install the Postgres C client library. As before, you can do it easily with the APT package manager or use different instructions for different operating system, as you, you can read for in the Django documentation. We modify the project database settings, adding the PostJS engine and the connection parameters of our Postgres database, which you may have locally or remotely. We can now define our marker model to store a location and a name. Our two fields are both mandatory. The location is a simple point field and we we'll use the name to represent the model. To easily insert new marker in our map, we use the Django admin interface. We define a marker admin class by inheriting the GeoDjango admin class, which uses the OpenStreetMap layer in its widget. Now we can generate a new database migration and then apply it to our database. We also create a new super user to access the admin interface after starting the project locally. Now we can start our project with the run server command and we can visit our admin section. Here, here is the page for inserting the marker in our admin. As you can see, we have a text field to enter the name of our marker and the widget that we can use to manually navigate the map and then manually define our point in the space. In this way, we can add many markers in our database. After having created a few markers, we can finally show them in our map. We can do that by adding the information in our view. Here, we are retrieving all the markers from the database and converting them to GeoJSON before adding them to the context of our view. In our template, we use the JSON script template tag to securely add our markers to our page. The JSON script template tag will generate a GeoJSON like this example with only one marker. So let's edit our JavaScript file and store the GeoJSON in a variable. Starting from this variable, we we'll build a layer for our map and we extract also the name of the single marker. Finally, we add the layer in our map by setting the view to contain all the data. We can now start again our project with the run server command and finally see our marker in our map. In this map, we see the few marker I created through uh, the admin. They are inside the code of the page, but the loading is still through them fast. You can also uh, see the pop-up of the marker of the peak I'm heading towards on this icon. But if we add a lot of more markers to show, our map loading will be much slower and Leaflet will have a harder time rendering it. So we need a more complex solution here. This photo shows a beautiful landscape that came to my side at the end of a challenging climb. The ice peak begin to be seen, but there are still challenging passages before reaching the summit. We then continue implementing the final version of our map. 
The Python requirements of our project are increasing, and therefore a good practice is to create a requirements file with all the package list. We'll use, in addition to Django itself, Django filter, Django REST framework with its geographic head-on, and also the Python Postgres database adapter. We install all the Python requirements using the Python package installer module, passing the file we created before. The packages that we'll use directly in the code of our project are Django REST framework and its geographic add-on, which we then insert in the list of the installed, installed apps of our project settings. So let's create a serializer for our marker class. Inheriting from the REST framework GIS serializer, we only have to define the marker model, the geographical field location, and also the optional field to be shown as additional properties. In this case, only the ID and the name. Our intention is to expose our markers via a RESTful API, and to do so, we define a read-only view set. We set the location as a field to filter our markers, and then a filter based on bound box. We also return all our marker instances without limitation or filters on it. In the marker application, we define the API URL of our new endpoints using the Django REST framework default router to create our path. Finally, we add to the definition of our URL of our project, a new path for the API that includes the path just specified for our marker app. After finishing our REST API, we move on to update our JavaScript file. As we no longer have the data preloaded in our page, we no longer have a way to position the map so that it contains all the markers. So we try to locate the user. In the positive case, we'll use its location to center the map. But in the negative case, we locate him on an arbitrary point in the map with a low level with a low zoom level. By no longer loading the marker directly on the page, we therefore ask our endpoint to return only the markers of the specific displayed area, passed as a bounding box string. To build the marker layer, we ask our endpoint for data in a sync way and extract the properties we want to show in the pop-ups. We invoke this flow every time the user stop moving on the map. We can now start again our project with the run server command and finally see all our markers in the final map. And finally, here is our complete map. In this example, we can see how the marker in a specific map are look. The loading takes place in a very fluid way because the numbers of call occurs only when the movement on the map stop, and therefore the data traffic is reduced, as well as the rendering of the marker carried out by leaflet. So the hike has also reached its final destination. Unfortunately, the view is a bit covered, but if we can finally have the new marker on the map. It was one of the longest hike I ever made, and I hope to be able to do a new one soon. If you are interested in the complete info of my excursion, you can, uh, in, on the Central Apennines, you can find it on my profile in Wikiloc. Speaking of map, there are also many other features that we can uh, add in the future. 
for example, marker customization and pop-ups to show more information. Marker filtering based on relation, relational data. The clustering of markers both in the front end to improve the visualization and backend to make the loading of data more efficient. Use of geocoding services to add marker locations starting from the address and so on. Uh, at the end of the talk, before saying goodbye, I want to share with you some tips based on my experience as a map developer with Django. First one is read the documentation in the Django website because it's full of information about GeoDjango itself. Read details about geographical, uh, geographical queries in the PostGIS web website because it's helped you to understand how things work at a lower level. Read also the source code of both project in GitHub because there is something you can learn only from the code. Search also for questions on Stack Exchange, but try to answer them by yourself instead of reading the answer of someone. Last but not least, you can also study this presentation because it is released with the Creative Commons license. In 20 tab, we have developed many map with Django. You can find out more about our open source project and our map works using this context. And to find out more about my personal work with Python and Django, use all my contacts here. With this QR code, you can download this presentation on my website. So thanks again for having me. Enjoy the next talk in the conference. Cool. Thank you very much, Paolo, for coming and talking to us about Django and GeoDjango. I've, uh, I've got like one question. So my, my, my impression, I've never done any Django work. Um, I haven't done much framework work. And, uh, and you can kind of see how frameworks work. When you start at the beginning, it's like, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of magic and nothing will happen. <laughs> put, put all the right files in the right places and nothing happens. And then you put the last thing in and all of a sudden, boop, a whole website pops up and you have online editing and all these things which ordinarily take a lot of time and very, very hard to put together by hand. And the framework is now just sort of providing them to you by magic. And just because you spoke the magic, uh, the magic incantation. Uh, but it takes a while to learn the magic incantation, right? Like, um, so I was wondering, like, so this is the experience of GeoDjango as a framework. Have you played with any other web frameworks in the geospatial space? Does anything else provide this level of sort of automatic mappiness? Uh, actually, I tried to use PostGIS JS, uh, using SQL by with the raw queries uh, mm -hmm. all around. I never um, used any. Uh, so complete framework to interact with it in the magical way as you can, yeah. as you can see. Um, so I can suggest uh, other um, other framework that do it. I, I know that there is other uh, other project that use uh, PostGIS Post uh, very well, but uh, Python is my language and Django is my preferred uh, uh, framework. So I try to um, improve my skills on on that field and to read how the things work and also to contribute to GeoDjango code to improve the support from GeoDjango and post Yeah. Um, is there a is there a point in uh, in working with uh, with a framework like Django or GeoDjango where the framework starts to get in the way? Are there things which are too fiddly or too off the beaten path? Like when when does the smooth road end? Mm -hmm. Uh, there is sometimes in some projects when you feel that there is something not already supported uh, in the GeoDjango module, and so you you are forced to to bypass all that yeah. magical stuff, and you start using it. But uh, after that, usually I I pack all the new things I learned and I used and pack it's in a function and try to open a pull request for the or Django ORM to use this. Because uh, uh, in the Django ORM, there is a lot of tests that verify you are using the function uh, in the good way and uh, test it to avoid some problem in, in the future. So uh, is a continuum 
uh, to learn a new function, use it, and then uh, put back on the on the Jumbo core. Awesome. Well, <clears throat> thank you again for telling us about Django and GeoDjango. Uh, we are going to 